Tristan. Yep. When I think of your content, especially on uh, like Instagram and TikTok, I think of someone who has kind of mastered the the blend of short form video in a photography context. And I would really love that to be the core of this conversation that we're about to have today. But first, I really want to know about how you got here. You know, give me the origin story of Trey Stain beginning yeah. from childhood. All right. Uh, so um, I was born in Tokyo, Japan, actually, right here. Nice. I think you gave a girl somewhere. And then, yeah, my, my family moved to Japan from Shanghai to study. And then they went to college here, my parents. And I was born, uh, lived till 11 years old. And then they decided to move back to Shanghai. And then I went to um, uh, middle school and high school there for seven years. And then I moved to the States, uh, that was San Francisco to uh, study uh, filmmaking because uh, growing up, I really I was really into um, video games. Mm -hmm. uh, I played a bunch of online video games like World WoW, World of Warcraft. Oh, WoW yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Warcraft 3. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and too. Then, then WoW, uh, I was playing WoW, and then, you know, back in the days, people were, like, making um, those, like, movies about, like, for WoW, like, PvP or, like, PvE or whatever, like, because, like, WoW, you can... Not not necessary. Wow, but like people were like recording shit, and then um you know, chopping them together to make a like a like a short film or like of a PVP video or something, and then I saw those and I was like, oh, these are cool, and then I was like, I was pretty good at Wow, so like, you know, I was a gladiator and shit, so like I was pretty good, and then I wanted to make my video, so um I started to um I started digging into uh, video editing, and then yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, you know, oh, this is how movies are made, you know, like putting those clips together. Uh, I was like, oh, so um, I started to grow interest in uh, filmmaking. So I decided to, oh, uh, this could be my career in the future. So, uh, yeah, that's how I chose filmmaking for college. Mm, as a subject. So you, you deliberately studied filmmaking in college. Yeah. I also read um, in doing some research about you that you also studied photography too yeah, yeah. so wh where did that begin and like what what got your your interest in photography yeah. so um that was a that was actually an interesting story so like so the school i'd already wanted to go in go to they didn't have the film major but the closest mm -hmm. thing they had was photography mm -hmm. and then uh i read the little bit of info about like what courses they were going to teach and then uh they were covering some of the video stuff like film and uh, but whatever so like I took that and then I was like uh but most of the stuff were fo focusing on photography in the beginning like I, I I knew how to take photos because uh like growing up I was toying with the uh, film cameras and stuff oh cool but I was more into videos I because like I was like oh I I will be the director right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was the dream yeah that was the D dream director. Yeah, yeah, yeah so um so yeah I was like ah this is not it and then uh, I transferred to uh, San Francisco Art Institute. They have uh, they had a uh, very nice, not really necessarily very nice, but uh, they did a bunch of uh, indie films, mm. like not not like those Hollywood films, but like more indie films. Uh, I really like those. So uh, yeah, I went there, studied, and graduated. Yep. What was it like studying specifically in photography and in filmmaking? Because like for me, right, I. Like I've been a creative my entire life, but I would say I am a bit of a dropout. <laughs> like I never got enough score or, you know, uh, high marks in high school to go to college or to uni or anything like that. And I'm completely self-taught, Uh huh. like literally from the time I, I finished high school. So I have no idea what it's like to be in college or uni, especially learning creative skills because, you know, although I teach it now on YouTube, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine it's it's definitely different in a formal education kind of setting. What yeah. is it like? Yeah, I get that a lot. So like this one time, this kid, right, he emailed me. That was back in 2019. So um, he was like, oh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I want to be, I want to do this full time in the future. I mean, like, I just got into high school, something like that. 
And then he was asking for my suggestions for uh, like opinions for art school. Mm. And then is it worth it to go to art school? Because like it's pretty pricey in the mm. States. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of money you can get. You can get everything here. No, it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, <laughs> and especially if you don't get like a, a sponsorship or something like that. It's yeah. like super pricey, right? Yeah. So um, and then my answer was uh, I, I, I went, but I know a lot of people, a lot of like very talented people like you. They didn't go to um, the art school at all, and then they also made it. So, um, so my so I just told him right my thoughts, my opinion. I went. I thought it was worth it because uh, it made me who I am right now. Mm. But I can't speak for you, right? So, um, and then that's the response I gave. And he also asked me, "Oh, what camera should I get? Should I get Fuji film? Back in the days, you know, Fuji was." <laughs> No X one hundred V. Yeah, I was like, oh, actually, Sony. Consider Sony. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And yeah, and then um, a year ago, or two years ago, I think during COVID or something, I, like that was like an email threat, right? I got a response from that email. Okay. I was like, oh shit, this thing continues. <laughs> and then he uh, he sent me this like photo of his like um, he got accepted in our school. Nice. He was like, oh. I made the decision because of you. So like, oh, this is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that was a little bit sidetracked. But yeah, I think art school, um, for me, I think um, it it like opened, like widened my mind a little. Because mm. uh, uh, I got to uh, read stuff that I would never read, like essays and stuff. And then we watched a bunch of very bizarre Films, like <laughs> bizarre film. What do you mean? Yeah, by like that? there's this one film, experimental. Uh, this like it's called Wavelength by I think Michael Snow, and then it's like one single zoom shot. All right, forty some minutes. Like there's like a picture of like a wave on the wall, right? Mm. Like zoom. It zooms towards the picture, kind of thing. That's that's it. That that's the, that's the whole film. That's the <laughs> the forty minutes of that. Yeah. Right. Okay. We watched a bunch of those. Okay. okay, so. okay. That's the vibe. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Not like everything, everywhere, all at once kind of vibe. More like high art, like very bizarre. super conceptual, yeah. like yeah, bizarre kind yeah. of things. Interesting. Did you learn a lot of? Um, because, I mean, the fundamentals between photography and videography are kind of different, right? Yeah. So, you know, did you find it easy to learn those fundamentals within that kind of context? Or, like, did you already know them? Or, like, what what, what was your, like, technical ability back then? Yeah. So, um, I think, so I, 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 my major was photography in the beginning. And I switched to film. So, like, I knew the basics of photography. Mm. But I wasn't, like, as good as, like, now. And then um, when I started doing films, I was more into like films, like videos, like I knew all that. We made short films, like like I, we knew like lightings and uh, like sound and everything. And I was more into that because like after graduation, I did like a year of like uh, video production in San Francisco mm -hmm. for our startups. We were making like those crowdfunding videos. So yeah. And then um, uh, and back in the days, uh, one of my classmates, he was pretty big on Instagram. Uh, and then he was doing like those like 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 early Instagram days, right? Mm -hmm. Those like shot on iPhone, like very minimalistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah those photos. Yeah, I mean, that was my generation. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, oh, these are cool, right? He had like, I don't know, thirty k, forty k. We were in college. That was like a big deal. Mm. And uh, his shots were all like, like displayed on billboards, mm. shot on iPhone, those those kind of things. So like, oh, that's pretty cool. So like, uh, I moved to Seattle from San Francisco, and I had nothing to do. So, um, you know, to make films, you need like a crew or anything. And then I was like, it'll be easier to do, do like photos instead. And then, and then uh, I was like, so I got inspired by my uh, friend back in college. So I started taking photos in Seattle. And then it started slowly, mm. you know, like I didn't pivot. I didn't want to pivot, but like it started slowly going down. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it kind of, uh, arguably the start of like your photography True, yeah. kind of like career thing uh -huh. yeah interesting do you did you find it easier doing photography 
in San Francisco at that time versus like, you know, picking up photography when you're in China or, you know, even before then? Yeah, because I, I didn't really take photography very like serious mm. until, you know, I started posting online and uh, getting like viral. What, what what year was this when you started posting online and getting viral? 2017. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine like the feedback from that would definitely drive you to to pick it up seriously. Yeah, because I've never had that kind of like feedback or like audience before, right? Mm. It's insane to have like a thousand people likes your photos. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I often think about when when I first started in Sydney, there's this uh, like a big stadium uh, and, you know, they play football and, and soccer and rugby and, and stuff in this big stadium. And I'd been there a bunch of times and actually stood in the actual middle of the stadium and like looked around and, and you know, just saw how gigantic everything was. And this stadium, I think it was like, like I read the thing, it, it fits 70,000 people uh -huh. or something like that. And I, I remember this feeling of like looking at my phone and being like, I have 70,000 followers yeah and this is every one of those people in this stadium like yeah. holy shit like just the scale just kind of blows yeah. your mind and especially with i think i think it's so easy to get lost nowadays in the source True. of being like what's another zero to, yeah. the, to the end of that but when you stop to think about you know how many people that actually is it's kind of crazy yeah. and i could definitely imagine it like spurring on a career in today's world especially with cameras that we have on our phones that we carry around with us 24 seven, you know, everyone takes photos, but that doesn't mean that everyone is a photographer. There is a difference between taking quick snapshots of our lunch and intentionally using photographic techniques to craft an image that can be art. And if you are looking at picking up the art and the craft of photography in the pursuit of mastery as quickly as humanly possible, then you might find this interesting. So I've spent well over 10,000 hours in dozens and dozens of different countries all across the world, all in the pursuit of taking world-class images that stand the test of time. As a Sony digital imaging ambassador, I've condensed down everything that I know, all the techniques, all of the tips, all of the tricks, and structured them into two different courses for beginner photographers that, as many of my students have said, have drastically accelerated their learning. For many of them, just after a single month of doing my courses provided them with the confidence and the technical ability to use a camera to intentionally compose their images and to also start creating a visual aesthetic and a style when it comes to editing their photos. So if all of that sounds interesting to you, then check out my 30-day photography fundamentals course and my Lightroom editing masterclass over at patk.com forward slash courses. And to celebrate the launch of this brand new podcast for the month of April in 2024, get 15% off with the code made at checkout. That's patk.com forward slash courses with the code M-A-D-E at checkout. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Now back to the episode. What happened from there in terms of, of your career? So um, before that, I was doing more uh, video works, like all kinds of video works, like commercial, um, direction, uh, planning, uh, and wedding videos. I did everything. And then started I so like I started to put focus more on like growing my social media photography. I was like, oh, this is it, right? This is the future. I'm all in. All in on photography. Yeah. yeah. Um, all in on I was all in on Instagram. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I see, I see. It's it's interesting because like you you started filmmaking and then transitioned into photography. Yeah. What was that like like I, I guess you were pretty flexible on whether or not it was either video or photo. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, like we'll probably cover this a little bit later on in the conversation, but you know, is video quote unquote, like your true love kind of thing? It was your first, I suppose. Um, or is it 
interchangeable between the two or do you like photography more or like what does that look like for you as a creative yeah good question so um so before right before i made my mind to like be like i'll be the director right? <laughs> david fincher like i was all about filmmaking i was like i was all about to make the to be remembered to make like the greatest film like mm-hmm. another fight club or something right. like that um i think now it kind of changed a little i'm uh because uh i got a lot of feedback from people who were uh, who were saying like oh i started doing photography or like tiktok instagram whatever traveling because of you or like you, you inspired me or something like that so like that made me very happy so like i think what i'm focusing now is like to uh to inspire people and then to help them achieve what they can what they want mm. to do in their life nice yeah well speaking about photography because um i do want to dive in a little bit to like i talk a lot about like art and craft and skills and, and that kind of stuff uh but in researching you i found something very interesting uh dug up some stuff from yeah 2018 or 2019 oh. or something like that um for a unnamed let's just say it's unnamed for now online site you did this like kind of interview thing and basically you mentioned that in the process of your photography uh-huh. along the way you mentioned that you you kind of lost yourself trying to be like other photographers at some stage you know and i think this was probably fairly early on especially in the the instagram era and stuff like that um and definitely before like short form video but you know tell me about that time in your photography career and you know how you felt about the inspirations that you're drawing from people and style and how you're developing style and your thoughts through that process and then how you eventually came to realize your own style and then like worked through all of that. So like I think back in the days, because I was not the like the first, you know, Instagram users. Like I had Instagram for a long time. Like my account was registered, created in twenty twelve. So that's that's fairly early, right? But like those people, I think you're more much more earlier. Uh, they're like, they started in 2015, 8, 16, I don't know. So like, like for the genre, I was interested in like urban photography, travel, like epic scale, landscape, whatever, like drawn shots. Like most of the stuff were already been done. Mm. Like, you know, like California Street in San Francisco, like Hong Kong Monster Building, like Tokyo Shibuya, right? Pretty much everything was has been done. But like, those are the, like I did a bunch of research because my goal was to be big on Instagram at the beginning. Cause you know, that was the motivation, the, the likes and everything. Right. Like it, it, it's, a, I don't blame you. It's, it's very yeah. addicting, you know, just yeah. getting that feedback. Yeah. In the beginning it was that. In the beginning. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I did a bunch of research, like what kind of photos were getting the most likes and, uh, it, and they, they all ends up, being the like the same stuff, right? Because th- those are the most epic, very iconic, best angle, best lighting, sunset here, sunrise there, drone shot here, long exposure here, you know, a person here, that. Okay, those. And then in the beginning, I was chasing those. I think I was trying to imitate in the beginning. And in the process, I learned a lot more about photography. And then I was like, Oh, this is why you need a telephoto here. So this is what telephoto does. And if I use telephoto here, so this photo shot makes better than let's say 50 millimeter. So, you know, I learned a lot more by recreating those shots by uh, pioneers or like other photographers. And then, you know, I, I, I jump started my photography skill by, uh, yeah, by imitating. Mm. So, and then I realized this is not going anywhere, right? I'll be just another, another, you know. Another everyone. Another everyone on Instagram. <laughs> the Instagrammer. Yeah. Urban photographer. Yeah, yeah. You know. That kind of. <laughs> yeah, that kind of, that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and then uh, I was kind of lost in the process. And then I started doing my own thing, like composite photography. You know, that's when I really go viral. Like I did like a composite of a monster building in Hong Kong. I stacked them. Mm-hmm. That was still viral till day, till now. I see them a lot. So yeah, that was the 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 first viral one. And then I did a lot more. I did a bunch of those. And then yeah, I just started doing more composite, like San Francisco, you know, the the drone shop, yeah, the California yeah, yeah. Street. Yeah. yeah, those kind of stuff. So like like by doing that I started to create like my own stuff. Mm. Not necessarily my own, but like something different. And then COVID hit, right? I couldn't travel. I couldn't go to the spots, to the spots. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think that was a good thing for me. So I it, like TikTok happened. So like, I think I, I like TikTok or like short form content nowadays because uh, it's like when I first started it, it's like more unique, right? Because like the way you present everything is like, so like I had, I could have more, like I could differentiate from other people. Definitely want to get into short form content uh, a little bit later. That's that's something, yeah. That that I really see your your uh, content uh, heralding and, and being a real evangelist for. But in terms of photography, I just wanted to mention that you know, imitating others, especially the people who have come before you, especially as a travel photographer, mm-hmm. I really resonate with that because. I teach a lot of beginners, a lot. And there is something about being in the same place that someone else has been before you. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that they've had success in a specific way, in shooting a specific style in this place that you've already, like you're currently in right now. And then trying to replicate that and being like, oh, okay, this is what, you know, this is the decision-making process behind this shot. And this is why this person shot it at this time of day or use this kind of lens and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I think by imitation, it definitely does accelerate your learning quite a bit. So I do definitely re- resonate with that. And then, you know, I've had so many, the next stage of that is, is, you know, injecting your uniqueness and injecting your own character and yourself into a new and fresh thing. And I definitely, you know, resonate with that because, you know, I've had so many viral images before the advent of social viral virality of as, as we know it today. And it is such a such a similar path that we've walked, although different timelines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of so in terms of that then, you know, I always ask creatives about their thoughts on art versus content Mm -hmm. and i think especially for you who has grown up in a in a traditional kind of setting in terms of education gone to formal education for filmmaking gone to formal education for photography what is your take especially today in today's context on the things that you make is it art or is it content what are your thoughts on that i think they are i think like if you look back, right, in each different period of the history, like eras or whatever, um, like like every different period, they make like different kinds of art. So like let's say when uh, when videos were first invented, like films, they're just shooting some like train goes goes into like a train station, or that shooting a, a wave. Yeah, that was it. That was like <laughs> for forty a big minutes. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> So if you look back, if I shoot like train, goes into train station now, is it art? So I think like each different, like, like different years, different time, they have like different kinds of art. So I think whatever we have now, uh, TikTok, short form content, or like photos, I don't know, who cares, YouTube videos, podcasts, they're all art. Right. Yeah. So it, your your definition, I guess, of art is it fair to say would be just very broad. Yeah. Do you, do you do you ever think a, a lot about that coming from that kind of background? 
I think because I see a lot of like debate online, right? They hate like they uh on like you know like artists. They hate hate on like content creators. They think like I don't know like TikToker, Instagrammer. They hate them, you know. Like uh, shooters are the best. I don't know. I'm I'm like okay with everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So. A person who is dancing on a TikTok video to some random beat is an artist to you. Uh, there's like there's still some 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 you know. What's the line? You know, some, like, it's very <laughs> difficult. It's very difficult. <laughs> but but like again, it's like I have this friend. I can't disclose the name, but like uh, I have this good friend back in Seattle. He's like huge on YouTube now, right? And then um, uh, he also went to film school. Uh, he started film. He he was making like very good short films, very good music videos, very good, very artsy. If you look look at now, it's still like artsy, good. Like Sam Coder, better than those. Um, and then he started doing uh, comedies. He started doing like TikToks, short form, and uh, he made it. He's like very big now. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends on what the goal is, right? Yeah. If if the goal is to get as big as possible and, you know, get as many fo- followers as possible and get as much as engagement as possible, yeah. then there are there are methods that are better suited to that than other methods. Yeah, I think. At the end of the day, it, it's all up to your own goal. Mm. What, what is your goal today? My goal today, yeah. So, like, my goal before was to make, like, a sick film. Everything I do is to like to, on the way to like making a sick film. But as I said that, uh, I think it started to change a little. Like I think making a sick film, the, the reason I wanted to make a, like a very like epic like movie was not like about like like I I really like the process of like making a movie, but like um, to dig deep deeper, I was like. I want to be remembered, like, after I die, you know? Like, if you made, made, like, a very, very epic, like, movie, like, I don't know, like, Titanic, Fight Club, Adventure, I don't know. I think eventually you'll be remembered, right? Oh, like, year 2020, this guy made this film. It'll be in a art, art history book or something. I think that's, like, a very cool way to, like, leave my own legacy. Mm. So that was the goal. So, like, to achieve that goal, I realized that it doesn't really have to be, like, through the movie. But, like, movie is a nice way because everyone watches the movie. But, like, I think nowadays, you know, I, I received the, those, like, messages very warm. Um, you know, their, their whole life changed because they watched my Instagram reels. That's very insane to me. So, um so I, I, I think I just keep doing what I do to like inspire more people. Where does it end? When does it end? Uh, What's the end goal? Like, are you going to just continue doing this for the rest of time? Or like, what, what, is, the, what is the game plan, you know? Yeah. I think as far as I still have the passion, right, for it. Because like, this is my passion now. So like, as far as I still have the passion... For to like for creating content or like making stuff, either like content doesn't really necessarily mean like short form content. I might do YouTube in the future. I might like pivot to like actual filmmaking in the future. I don't know. Yeah, but like create some something, mm. create art. Right. Yeah. But you're just at the moment kind of uh, flowing and just going with the wind and and kind of seeing where everything takes you. Yeah. Especially with the short form content. Uh huh. Right. Nice. So on that, you know, short form content, I I really wanted to get you in because I think in the photography space on Instagram, there are a lot of different photographers who have gotten a lot of success uh, in terms of audience and a lot of growth with certain methods of short form content and different formats and and trends and all the rest of it. And I think you you are definitely one of those people who have mastered the short form context uh especially in in a photography setting you know i had a look at your your stats just to do more like research and stuff like that and i i remember seeing it was like 2019 or 2020 you're at like 200k 
mm-hmm. and then come today, you know, you're at 800k, and that growth, you know, 600 in in you know just a, a few years is pretty crazy because a lot of people grind for a very very long time right. to even see the first number, to even see 200k, or let alone like you know 100k. Uh, you know, I remember it took me. I got lucky because I, I got a bunch of different viral uh, images and I got you know featured by Instagram and all the rest of it. But mm-hmm. even for me to get a, my first 100K took me four years, three, four years. It, it, was, it was a long process. If you're a photographer visiting Japan, you probably want all of the most visually attractive, stunning spots to go to and photograph. And in Japan, thankfully, there is most certainly no shortage of that. It's why I've been coming back to Japan nonstop since 2016 and eventually decided to move here as well. But as an English speaker, not knowing how to speak Japanese, finding all of the good spots, all of the local spots is hard. And doing all of the research for how to get there, in what season, you know, what gear to use, and all of the other nuances and considerations that lead to a great image, it is tiring and time-consuming. So I've made it easy for you. My photography guides to Japan and Tokyo are the best selling photography guides on the internet. And I have been doing this for many, many years, so I know a thing or two about it. In them, I show off all of the best spots this country has to offer and how to capture them, saving you time, money, and stress, and simplifying the planning process and enabling you to have a great time here. So if that sounds interesting to you, Head on over to patk.com forward slash Japan to check out my photography guides to Japan and Tokyo. And to celebrate the launch of this brand new podcast for the month of April 2024, get 15% off with the code MADE at checkout. That's patk.com forward slash Japan with the code M-A-D-E at checkout. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Now back to the episode. When I think about your growth on Instagram, I think about short form content. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, like how would you describe your journey with short form content uh, and where do you kind of see it going in the future? Uh, I started making like I, I, so I knew short form content was a thing because, you know, like I I think TikTok first launched in the US uh, 2019 or something, either 2018 or 2019, right? no one was really like not like big creators were really using them like as much as now uh and then this this friend this friend of mine he was like the big youtuber guy um he was saying oh tiktok is the future right you should post tristan you should post on tiktok and then i really despise tiktok man you and me both at the time when it first came out yeah 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 i didn't like them at all yeah like i was into uh, creating quality content you know epic shots epic transition I, I 100% agree. In the last episode, I was talking to to Ben, and he was one of the first people who was trying to push me to get to use TikTok. Yeah, and I was like, "Nah, man, I'm I'm all about the art. I'm all about you know the photography stuff." Anyway, sidebar. But yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. I was like that. I was exactly like you. I was like, "Nah, this is not me. I can't do those. I can't dance. You know, I mean, like an adult stupid skit." Yeah. Right? Like I take photos. I shoot. Yeah, I, I press make, the shutter button. That's yeah, it. I make art. <laughs> I'm behind the camera. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not going to be like, you know, like like this today, right? Mm-mm-mm. And then, yeah, so like I, I didn't start, right? I wish I did. If I did, like I'll be bigger now, but I didn't start. And then I see him grow from like a million to 10 million and then now like 30 million on YouTube. But anyways, um, yeah, so like I started, really started doing TikTok and short form, like Reels. When Instagram launched Reels, I, uh, and I wasn't growing much like back then because of COVID, I couldn't travel. I had no new content. Like my, my fee was about like travel photography. And then my clients were like all over the world. So like. Like everything kind of stopped. I remember that period as well. Cause like for me, same thing, you know, I, I'm a travel photographer. I can't travel. What do I do? And I remember like looking through my like Lightroom archive and I had recycled like 
like every single one of like my main images on Instagram for the algorithm. And I just got to the point where I was like, shit, I, I ran out of stuff to post. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I gave it a shot, right? Uh, like in the beginning, it didn't. It's like in the beginning of like short film content, I was like, you know, I didn't have much videos, to be honest. Like I was like taking photos. So like I wasn't recording behind the scenes at all. So like not much video content. So like I was posting drone shots, right? Because like when you're like flying your drone, you, you you sometimes you record videos. Sometimes you take shots, but like you had videos. And then I had the Mavic Pro. It shoots like vertical perfect. So like I was posting those on, on TikTok and Instagram Reels. And then I wasn't getting like, I thought my shots were epic. Could I compare it to like, there was like, like stupid dance videos or like <laughs> other skit, right? There was like low quality. And I wasn't getting any views. And, and my friend told me, oh, your, your shit's too good for TikTok. Oh, I was like, oh, what? Too good. Too good. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> that blew my mind. So I started really dig deep. And then, you know, like those like short form content, they have like different format, different, I think different vibe, different way to approach it. And then I think like the way people like consume the content is also different. So like I really got into like studying, oh, what kind of short form content I should make. And then, yeah. So I, that I guess that's how I started like short form content. So then do you, did you go through the same process that you went through in photography where you saw, you know, who was doing the big stuff at the time and where the locations were? Did you do that with short form at that time and, and, and see, you know, what are the trends and who's doing well on what photographers are doing well on short form and, yeah. and all the rest of it? Like, I was identifying like the formula for short form content, right? Because I already knew how to take like uh, some epic photos. Like, oh, this place, 400 mil. This place, wide angle. This place, sunset. This place, a person mm -hmm. right there. Something like that. I already knew everything. And then for the video content, for short form video content, I didn't know nothing. So like I was studying, right? I was studying the, you know, the, the most viral videos in my own niche, like photography. And there's this one guy, Jordi. Jody Koaladic, yeah, like okay. Spanish dude. Okay. He's like, he's really big, like 20 million on TikTok, 6 million, 7 million on Instagram. Like he was doing like creative photography, like just showcasing the, like mostly just like most of his content, like that formula was like the behind, behind the scene and the result, right? So yeah, I went that route, mm. like, I, I guess like behind the scenes, like show, showcasing how I took the photo and the result. And then I I wasn't doing the same thing as he was doing because like he was doing different things. Like he was doing like those wide angle, like, uh, you know, like some like foreground, like those are playing with the perspective. Kind oh, of stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. he was doing those. Uh, so okay, I, I, that was not my thing. I was more into like, Telephoto epic places. So like, yeah, I started to showcase. So I thought, oh, the result and the behind the scenes need to be very different, right? Very dramatic transition. What when do you, the beat hit, it'll be fucking <laughs> epic. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you do that? Like tactically, what what are the things that you do to make it so different and then yeah. make it epic? So back in the days, I started doing uh, telephotos. I started doing, I think, I, I think I started the trend. I was like doing the, you know, like recording the uh, camera here, setting up on tripod with a telephoto lens, mm. right? If you record the behind the scene with uh, your phone, uh, like 1X or 0.5, it's like, let's say the mountain or whatever. It's like tiny, right? But like you move into your viewfinder, you get to see the view. Oh, that's like, oh, it's so huge. It's massive, like moon, mountain. I don't know. Who cares? And then boom, the result. Right. And yeah. uh, obviously, like you're going from a 1X iPhone, crappy quality, yeah. like, you know, 24 mil equivalent into a full frame, super nice high end 400 millimeter compressed yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah. That kind of, that kind of uh, difference is, is, is huge. 
I, I see that you find you find a way to also add a lot of humor to your short form videos. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, I uh, I study a lot, like on TikTok and Instagram. I uh, I learn from different creators, not necessarily just photography. And then I was like, oh, they're very talented. They're like very good at like making short form content, like either a skit or like comedy or whatever. And then it's all about like short form content. It's all about like 15 seconds or whatever, like, like this. And then make people either go wow or like may, make people either go ha ha something. And then I thought everything I saw online, whatever is like, like viral content, right? It's either like, wow, this is sick. Or, oh, haha, this guy's funny. Mm. I wanted to combine the two. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned that because, you know, there are channels out there that break down, these are the things that make a video viral. And then, you know, there's things like hooks and, I don't know, the, the payoff and a whole bunch of different stuff, like a way to uh, effectively systematize virality. Yeah. Is that something you think about a lot with, with your content? I think so. I think because short form content is very difficult because it's very short. I think it since it's very short. It's like making very short commercial. Like let's say it's like 10 seconds commercial. Very hard to make. Like every frame. Not necessarily. Every frame counts. So um, yeah, like if people swipe away, no view for you. Right, like you have to try as hard as you can to like entertain them till the end of your video because I show result at the end. Mm. If they don't go till the end, they won't see. They you. don't get the payoff. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, in 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 doing research for for you and just I I <laughs> I probably watched like every single one of the videos. Oh shit! Just. <laughs> to do my own research like prior to really meeting you and knowing you like i i, I met you a couple of times uh a couple of years ago or like last year or something like that um but never really consumed a lot of your content but in order to understand you and do more research i yeah i like watched everything and there seems to be a uh, trend i guess or at least you've broken down maybe it's consciously maybe it's instinctively whatever the case may be the general format of how you kind of put together most of your short form videos. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always some kind of introductory hook that gets you to, to stay to the end so that like you're explaining to people what they're expecting by the end of the seven or 15 seconds or whatever it is. But sometimes the, the beginning is funny or sometimes the payoff is like not a photo and it's like, you know, you dropping a piece of gear or like, you know, running down to meet someone or like something like that. And there's always these little beats throughout your your short form content that are always quite similar. And I think from the outside looking in, it seems like you've kind of developed a system for that. Yeah. I don't know if you if that's right. I don't know if that's how you think about it. I at think all. so. Yeah, because <laughs> I think about consistency a lot nowadays. Uh, back in the day, I, I was like all over the places. If you look back, like two, two, three years ago, I was I trying different things for because uh, I, I I I tried I tried everything for photos like for like just photo post, everything's like very consistent like the because you know like the editing the Lightroom and everything like the tone, everything's very consistent. But videos are different, right? Because like videos like everything's like moving. You know, you have uh, this frame, that that frame. Like I might be in the frame. I might not. I might be behind the camera. So um, I think from I was observing my account like from like the outside, I would say. And then I realized like, oh, this guy, he, he might, you know, like I remember when I was like shooting those like behind the scenes of like telephoto photos. Um, I wasn't really in the frame. So like what people remember me as a creator or they would just remember the photo. And then I started to realize like a lot of the um, 
successful, like in terms of su- successful, I guess, like they have more reach, more engagement. Um, they are more uh, their content, short form content, video content is more consistent. By consistency, I mean um, either their uh, entire like the tone they set for the video is the same. It's either this guy's comedian or like either this guy just like take epic photo. That's fine. Or something else. And then I was all over the place. So like I wanted to consolidate them into like one, my, my own style. That, that has been the goal. I think I I'm getting there, but not there yet. I think if you think I have my own style, then I'm, I'm pretty much getting there, but yeah. <laughs> it's always much easier to see someone else's style than like try and define what yours is unless you've sat down and like yeah. you know, deliberately think, thought about it and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's very interesting getting your perspective on this because there are people who just kind of make content for the fun of it. And especially photographers, you know, often make a lot of content on Instagram without much secondary thought. Yeah. You know, they take a nice photo, they spend a bunch of time making it and editing it and polishing it up and smack it on Instagram and then that's kind of like job done. Mm-hmm. But I think from from your perspective, it seems like you are much more deliberate in playing the game because Instagram is a game at the end of the day. And if you're not really playing it to win, then you also don't really get to complain about it not working when you know you are you're not playing it (laughs) yeah um but it it does seem like it's very intentional for you to create the content that you create so that you can you know become as as big as possible on the platform is that fair to say yeah i'm very intentional Mm. about the content like whatever i post online back in the days i was more like candid more like more like whatever i Oh, I will post this on my story. I was like, oh, this could be a viral video. So I post this. I don't do those anymore. I'm more, yeah. More direct. More More direct, yeah. So in that vein, do you also think about creative business and like surviving long term as a creator in the same way? So like I am actually not too well versed in how you make money as a creator. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love to know how you do that. You don't have to dive into specific like numbers if you don't want to, but for the the audience, I think it's really interesting to know how a creator makes their living so that they can then do that for themselves. Yeah, yeah. And they can learn those those things. I think for me, uh like there are different revenues, right? Um like one as a as a creator who's like active on TikTok or like Instagram, the big part is the brand sponsorship. Okay. Their brand of content, either like you know, do like a promo for them, like promote, I don't know, smartphone, Adobe, Sony, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those, and then some uh, sell some of my digital products like Lightroom presets and whatnot, and I also do occasionally do. Um, brand branding images for different like brands uh mostly so local some are like international they will hire me to uh, they really like my style so like they w- want me to create some like images for them i did some some of the recent ones i did there's like this one seattle local company like startup they wanted they they didn't have anything right no images but like they had their uh, branding backstory so like i i acted as a creative agency sort of so like i plan everything this shot for here this shot there so like i did i do some some of that i also did did some for some hotel brands uh shangri-la they were like rebranding there's like new new like younger brands of them like sub brand Hotel Gen, I believe. So, like, I did most of the photos and videos for them. So, uh, I did those. Um, other than that, and digital products, some investing, some crypto, <laughs> uh, some, um, and also some other income. Cause, like, I, I'm bilingual, I trilingual. I 
I speak Chinese, English, and Japanese. And also like some platforms like Instagram and TikTok, they're not, you know, you can't access them in China. Mm. So, um, but in China, they have the, their equivalent, right? Equivalent platform, I'm also like active on those. I do the same thing, you know, as I do here. The cross post kind yeah. of thing. So they want, they want to promote, like I have a very large audience there too. Uh, so, you know, like to promote, or like digital products, whatever I do here, I do. I also do in China. And what kind of um, like if you imagine like a, a pie, what kind of percentage is like your digital products versus you know brand stuff versus you know UGC or anything you know any other kind of revenue streams? What what are the percentages of like? Your total income in terms of that. Yeah, digital products. I started getting like more serious, starting from this year because I had some free time to like rebrand some of my stuff. Started doing like Facebook ads, some like Chinese ads, things like that. That I started this year. Well, that was that was that went pretty well. So like, I I don't I can't see the percentage now, but I would assume that would be like. Twenty percent, that would go up to twenty percent. Right, that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. And um, the branded content, I think, is still the biggest part. I would, I would say, mm, I think would go up to fifty percent if it everything goes well. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, the actual like more traditional uh, commercial work that I really can't say. Sometimes I get like really giant gig like 50k and up sometimes i don't get it's like those are i don't really like actively pitch for those mm. they're like because i don't really actively pitch for anything i'm like pretty chill right are you all like inbound yeah. kind of thing it everything's just... pretty much inbound yeah, yeah yeah so i spend most of my time like creating stuff other than you know reaching out to like yeah, so like I, I'm pretty much waiting for them to come. Yeah, I think I think once you get to a certain level, and it doesn't necessarily need to be like audience level or like size or yeah. whatever the case may be, it it starts to become mostly inbound. And you know, me and Ben in the last episode where it was we were talking about this as well, and it's it's kind of nice, but at the same time, it makes you a little bit comfortable because you could be winning deals yeah. that you know, are, you know, $50,000 and up that kind of level of deal, you know, and it's, it's, although you never really know when they exist and it, all the rest of it. So it is very, very hard to say, but yeah, that, that seems super interesting of, of your brand deals. What, what does your brand deals look like in terms of formats and campaigns and, and that kind of stuff? Like whether it's yeah, sponsored Instagram post or like uh, a marketing campaign that does X, Y, and Z. Like what are the kind of jobs you've done in that space? Yeah, I did a lot of, uh, my account is still like more photography, videography, travel, kind of mm -hmm. travel less, but more photography. <laughs> more just Japan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, as the rest of, I think everyone, like, you know, smartphone, I do a lot of those for different brands. I never do exclusive mm -hmm. for one brand. Mm -hmm. So but it's, that's like product promo. Promo, yeah. Sponsored post yeah. on Instagram or wherever it is. Yeah. And also I have some of the ambassadorship. Yep. I was uh, the lighter ambassador for a year. And then uh, uh, I'm the uh, Chase Sapphire ambassador. Mm -hmm. So like that's like a travel credit company. Credit card. What what do those two ambassadorships look like, and like what what is your like what do you have to do with them? You know how much do you make from them? If you don't mind me asking, and like what what is what does a ambassadorship look like? Because a lot of people wouldn't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. being an ambassador for a company for a certain thing is is quite a prestigious thing, and a lot of people don't really get access to understanding what goes on behind the scenes for those things. So right. what, what does that kind of entail? Yeah. 
So there are a lot of brands are like taking advantage of like smaller creators, right? Oh, we will offer you ambassador. You're like, whatever ambassador, blah, blah, ambassador. And then you get X, Y, and Z for like products. Most of them are products. I think the smaller ones. And then you'll make content for us. Like I never do any of those. I only do like ambassadorship for like, like the big companies. So like the brands that I really believe in, like Adobe, because like I use Lightroom, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, because I'm already using them. Mm. So like, why not? Yeah. You already obviously believe in them because yeah. you're using them. So it's... And they also the, the chase thing, because I use those credit cards. Like, that's like, why not? I I, I only do, do, do those two. And then in terms of the, the structure of ambassadorship, I think I can only speak for those two because I've been, that's that's the, uh, you know, the one, I mean, uh, the Lightroom one you make, they give you like a budget, like they give you like, a, you know, compensation, right? For a year of ambassadorship. Right. And then you make, um, they have like, oh, your term is this. And then each month you make some content and then also uh, you. Um, and the content is promoting Lightroom. Not really necessary. Like Lightroom was very, it's to promote con Lightroom. Okay. But it's not like, oh, uh, wasn't like, I think my content wasn't like, oh, use Lightroom, get this, blah, blah. Like more organic. Right. It wasn't like a straight, here's a straight ad, like super on the nose, like yeah. download Lightroom today, you know, that kind of vibe. It was more yeah, chill, organic. Yeah. Very organic. Because I was making those anyways. Like, you know, how I edited those photos or like, the tone or like if I make a, you know, like a uh, carousel post, like I'll do like be like before and after the settings and whatnot. Those are in Lightroom. Everything's like related. So like, yeah, nothing very, you know, cringe, nothing very abrupt. So like everything blended in very well. So, and also to attend some of their events like Adobe Max. And then... I I think when I had it, I had like a passion project. So mm -hmm. like everyone need to pitch in like a, like a passion project. Mm -hmm. They give you like a budget and then you go do the project mm -hmm. and then post on Instagram. Right. Is that that uh, inclusive or on top of like what you get paid? I as think an it was on top. So like, yeah, like on top of what you get paid but like everything's inclusive because like everyone has to do that so like everyone was getting paid the same right so every single Lightroom ambassador was getting paid the same yeah and they had to do a passion project yeah and what was your passion project my passion project was to um when I pitched it right uh my project was to uh because I had the uh that was I think that was year 2022 uh like after the pandemic I would say um, I had a bunch of like, I traveled around the world in 2019 before the pandemic. So like I had like a lots of like shots from, from back then. And then my project was to like compare like the post pandemic and pre pandemic, like different eras, mm -hmm. like different locations, like the difference, I would say like the, you know, the impact of pandemic, but kind of pivot, like went like a different route. But something similar, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But they were obviously happy with with yeah. with that, and you know they're still happy now. Yeah. So that that was a one year ambassadorship. Yeah. Right. What about your other one? You're the the one for the credit card. A credit card one, yeah. The credit card one started last year. Um, that was also uh for a year period. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was pretty nice. Like, Chase did. They're like a very big company. They're also like a financial company, so like. You know, everything they do, they can. A very, like, a lot of restrictions. A lot of red tape. Yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. So, but that was mostly because they they saw me travel a lot. And then whatever I, like, I present myself online, mm -hmm. I think matches their, you know, targeted audience, mm -hmm. I guess. Like, like the kind of demographics who would be using the card that you're trying to promote kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So mostly I um, attend their branded event. They sponsor a lot of events throughout the year, like Sundance Film Festival, 
mostly in the U.S. there. Sundance Film Festival, some music festivals, some they also have. Uh, they started to do like more airport lunches. This is not sponsored, but their lunches are the best in the states. Cool. <laughs> yeah, because they're new. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, like they're really good. Because the <laughs> I've been to some of them. Yeah, yeah. They're really good. I mean, yeah, feel free to keep plugging if you want. <laughs> as long as you believe in it, you know that's. Yeah, I believe in them. Yeah. So you know, I went to some lounge openings and then uh, some events, some like Miami Art Week. Yeah, just to attend. You know, as a person of influence, that kind of vibe. Yeah, as their like ambassador. Yeah, yeah. It's like showcase my experience there. Mm. Take some lifestyle photos, post online, show some Instagram stories. Yeah, I think you could. You couldn't really have two more contrasting ambassadorships in terms of like the overall subject matter and approach of what you do in either of them. You know, you have. The Chase ambassadorship, which is very, by the sounds of things, very lifestyle, very influencer, very like based on your your reach and your audience and, and that kind of thing. And then you had this Lightroom ambassadorship, which was all about photography and all about your edits and all about your craft and less about you as a as a personality or a a person who has a lot of followers or whatever the case may be, but more about the art. Mm -hmm. And that, that I find that really, really interesting. What, um, what kind of, well, if you are, what kind of ambassadorships would you be targeting in the future? The most I enjoyed from being the Lightroom ambassadorship was to meet different people. Mm. I like meeting, you know, like-minded people because, because we're actually pretty lonely in, in the field, right? Absolutely. Right? The, if being, you look, if you go outside, <laughs> no one's like you. Yeah. Being, yeah right? being a creator, especially the, the bigger you get, the lonelier it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the, the really nice part to like have this like family of creator around you and you actually get to get, you can get together to like meet each other in person. Yeah, so like, I, I think Adobe Max was the highlight of it. Because, you know, that was like, we were just recovering from COVID. We were mm. doing mostly just Zoom. Back in the days, they were doing like trips together. We didn't oh, get any. That, oh, that 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 kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Adobe Max was our only trip. Mm. Oh, but I also did uh, New York uh, Photoville, New York, mm. like photo exhibition in New York. And uh, four of us got together. I was one of them. That was cool. I got to exhibit my photos in New York. That was pretty cool. I think that was the only two events. But those two were the happiest moment, mm. like the highlight. Mm. So, yeah. So, and then the chase thing, also like the same thing. I get to meet different people, different mm. creators. Like mm. uh, our, our like ambassador crew wasn't as big as the Lightroom one. We only had six mm -hmm. throughout the States, only six. Uh, like every single one is different. Like, but you get to know these six people pretty yeah. like intimately, right? Yeah. Like they all create different things. Mm. They're all super talented. So like, oh, those are very cool. So like I learned a lot from them and also like, I guess, deepened my knowledge more. Mm. Nice. Of going back to create a business of the brand deals, what would you say is the percentage that your ambassadorships in the past have, have taken up of that in terms of like the overall pie yeah. of how much you get paid for? I think uh, Chase thing was pretty big in terms of uh, the payment. It was pretty big. It was close to like six digits. So that's, that was pretty nice. Mm. Uh, I didn't really need to do much. They're pretty flexible about everything. Mm. Whatever I create, they're like fine with it. Mm -hmm. But I need to go through a lot of layers of like improvement. Of course. Right. Yeah. But like they won't say, oh, oh, change this color to more red, more blue. <laughs> right. Good. I never got those. <laughs> right. Know. Yeah. You know those. No, yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've been in much worse. <laughs> yeah. So because they're more like lifestyle, right? So like everything I, I make is fine as long as, you know, nothing against your like legal. Sure. Yeah. So that's pretty chill. So mm -hmm. like I like those. Mm -hmm. 
in the future, I would want more of those because mm. uh, I think financial reason is one part. The other is like I get to meet like different people because I would never like my circle is all photography videos. Mm. If I wasn't the ambassador for Chase, I wouldn't like, you know, meet any of them. Yeah, it's hard to network with other creatives who aren't in the same media. You yeah, know? I find myself not having a lot of uh, illustrator friends or you know painters or, or anything like that. I, I do have a bunch of like product designers and uh, UX designer friends and stuff like that from my previous uh, career. But yeah, unless it's like photo video, it's usually pretty hard. Yeah, so I could draw more inspiration from them. So I could, I think the more you, uh, the more content you consume, the more knowledge you have. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it'll help you more. Sure. Yeah. So you would say, would it be fair to say that your ambassadorships took up the vast majority of your brand deals in previous years, I suppose, like in terms of the overall pie kind of thing? Not really. I think... 50% okay ish that's still quite substantial yeah yeah you know that would make it what 25% of your overall yeah yeah so those are nice and also like again i'm like representing something i believe in right mm. absolutely so then talking further about you know surviving as a creative person because you know one of the reasons why i started this podcast is so that I could show other creatives who are trying to make it full time that there are just so many different ways you can make it. So moving forward, let's say you didn't have those ambassadorships in the next coming years or any ambassadorships in the next mm -hmm. coming years. What, you know, what are the revenues you would be relying on? Would they be the same in terms of the same like splits and the same categories and the stuff? stuff like that or are you looking to expand out in any areas or you know what is the the plan for for you as a creator yeah. making money to survive yeah <laughs> moving forward i think there are many different ways i'm at this stage i'm not really worried about those anymore but i would say like i think creating your own product that like and promote it because like your own product you absolutely believe in that right because you're selling them yeah, otherwise you wouldn't have made it right? yeah to your audience they followed you for for you so like i think you you have more control in like in terms of uh how how you want to promote them or like how you want to make them or like how you want to market them everything so like i think for most creators i think not just waiting for like you know uncertain brand deals, ambassadorship, mm -hmm. lots of things change. Mm -hmm. Like making your own product, like it's either like courses or like other digital products, like guides, I don't know, anything, is definitely the more uh, stable way to make an income. Is that what you're trying to push towards right now or what does that look like? Right now, yes, because uh, I... The, the process of like making, I made like a new website for my, uh, the digital product. Mm -hmm. And then it was very fun. I'm, I'm like always about, I'm very curious person. So like, you know, learning how to make like a website from scratch. Like before I wasn't like really, I, I made some websites, but like those are through like other websites, you know, like Squarespace or something like that. So this time I had really dig really deep into like making a website or oh, studied like oh what makes a successful product page or something and something like that and then studied you know uh oh the web the page speed i don't know i didn't know anything so like, like making the site was really fun mm. like like i'm like a big gamer right uh making the site was like you know playing Dark Soul for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, in the in the sense that every every wrong move and you have to restart from the checkpoint because you die or like... <laughs> it was just it was the, the hard, like the... The hard bird kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get you. 
<laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it is. And, you know, I am very sympathetic and empathetic towards that. I got my first start as a full-time creative building websites. Yeah. So I learned how to code. I learned WordPress, you know, and then moved on to things like Squarespace or d- designing and building and coding from the ground up just with code without without using any external apps and services like we have today, like, you know, Squarespace or whatever. So I definitely empathize with the journey. It's not, it's not, not an easy one. It's not an easy one. And then all the marketing side of things, like, yeah. like you mentioned, how to optimize for conversion, you know, how to speed up your web page and looking at page speed and looking at then, you know, funnels and sales and blah, 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 blah. It's a whole other skill set that yeah. most creatives don't put themselves through. Yeah. I think that's a shame. Um, but I am very happy to hear that you're going through that. Yeah. You know, I myself have five different revenue streams of digital products alone. And for me, as that has been the thing that's changed my life more so than anything else. So mm-hmm. I'm very happy that you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. What's the next product you're going to be releasing? I was thinking about making like a guide. Okay. Because I was talking to my friend. Tina about yeah. it because yeah. I saw her making lots of like different guides and stuff and then he was also making like courses but one thing he he um he told me I think it really hit it, she, she said like like let's say if I m- made like a course for how to go viral on TikTok or like how to make you know viral Instagram reel anything like that but like this field they changed like, I don't know, every month, right? It might not be relevant in May. So um, so she was like, she needs to be responsible for the students and uh, she needs to constantly update those. But like for guides, like a travel guide, those places won't go away. Mm-hmm. Most likely the restaurants will still be there. So like, oh, that makes sense. So like, and then... um. I post a lot of food on my story and then I post different locations. So I, I, I think a lot of people maybe follow me for travel content. So I think that could be the next one. Nice. I highly encourage you to to do that. You know, I don't know if you know the products that I make, but I was the first person, as far as I know, in the creator economy to ever do photo guides and creator guides and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, Japan. Yeah. Yeah, so my first one was Tokyo uh, back in 2016 or 17 or something like that. And back then, and even for the next couple of years after that, you know, no one really did creator guides of any sort, you know, whether it was photo, food, whatever, purely because we there wasn't such, like the, the whole social thing wasn't even that big back then. You know, like now from 2020 onwards even you know it's gotten so popular and and there are so many guides out now and and you know everyone's kind of doing it and it's good you know it means that people like yourself can have a more stable income and a more reliable way to keep sharing value and making sure that people who do come to your photo book spots or you know food spots are having the best vacation of their lives and getting the best possible content as well. You know, it's all, it's, it's all good. So I hope you do it. Yeah. Actually, I met this guy. I think I was shooting this like from a bus terminal in Shinjuku. Mm-hmm. And then I met this uncle. <laughs> he was like, uh, I was chatting with him, right? He was like, oh, he chatted with me. He was like, oh, I'm from Singapore, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh, nice. How did you find this place? He was like, oh, I read this guy from Paquet. <laughs> <laughs> and it was some like, some uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I, yeah, you know, when you said before about like uh, how your content, when people say, oh, yeah, I went to this spot or I got into photography because I saw your reels. Blah, blah, blah. Like that, for, for me, I resonate with that so much because when I was first starting to make my guides and, you know, giving out like Japan tips and tricks and blah, blah, blah. I'd get that 
all the time, every day. And it, it's just the best thing. It's, yeah. it's the best thing knowing that the things that you make actually have some kind of positive impact. Right. You know, and actually enriching someone's life in some way. I think yeah. that's like, yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. So when can we expect this? I'm going to put you on a deadline. When can we yeah. expect this uh, this next guide of yours? Uh, yeah, this is putting <laughs> me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I need to seriously start working on them <laughs> this trip. Yeah, this yeah, trip. I'm going to take advantage of this trip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking. Because to make the guides, you have to be intentional about like, Absolutely. The places you go, like the creating content. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think one of the biggest issues is that people create guides based on a one or two visits of a place. And then it's like, this is the best spot in Tokyo for ramen. But they've only been to like five or 10 ramen spots, right? How, do you, how can you know that's the best? Yeah. I think there's a big problem with like people who don't spend enough time in the place making the guide. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've been here a bunch, so you know I, I can't definitely can't wait to see what you you create. I want that ramen guide, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be the ramen guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you know, just to wrap things up, we've talked a lot about success and creatorship and, and stuff like that. For you as a creator, you know. What is the biggest advice you can give to someone who has a craft, mm -hmm. they're, say, doing photography, videography, whatever the case may be, and they're decent enough and they love it enough to, like, start making it their full-time thing? Mm -hmm. What is, what's, like, the top three bits of advice that you would give to someone like that who wants to make it their full-time thing? Yeah. Number one and the biggest, don't quit. If you don't quit, I think you'll make it, right? Eventually, you have Eventually to, right? Eventually, you have to make it. Yeah. Yeah. I think only two people, quitters and winners. So if you don't quit, you're going to win. And then something more practical, I think to, um, I think in the beginning, try more different things, not like look at, oh, you might, you might, be inspired by Paquet or like me. Like I'll be like you or like me to create the same kind of content. But like just like because you're starting out, right? You have this advantage of like try new things, fail, try other things. Maybe you'll fail. But the third time you might go like real big. So like don't be afraid to try different things. And then you might find your passion somewhere else. It's not like to say, oh, don't do video, don't do photo. But like, who knows? You never know. Because you're just starting. So like, that's that's really good, right? You're just like a, like a blank paper, white sheet. So like, just be creative, try different things. I think the third thing, I think that I learned the hard way. Um, after, you know, you started to make more content, to start to uh, get more traffic, start to grow. I think consistency is very, very important. Like, like a very consistent page will like very, like really accelerate your like your account or like you as a brand. Because I remember this this friend of mine. He was like he know he knew his craft, and then like he he was making good content, but like he didn't really took off right. Um, and then, but like one day he started consistently making this one, one type of content, like I think tutorial type, like sit down, talking head. And then, uh, he made some of those and didn't really take off, but like it was doing better than before. And then he continued to make those. And this one day, one of the video hit, right? And then he, the rest is history. He just like a hundred X is following in like one night, that mm. was insane. He went from 3K to 300K in like a night. Mm. I think he made that because like his other content, they're like very consistent. If they, if the, the you know, the stranger click on your profile, oh, you're making these content. You have the track record for making those. Hit follow. 
Yeah, I think that's super important. Um, just to give my own anecdote of that, it's you know I, in every single creative field I've I've done, it's it's always about not quitting and being consistent along the way. You know, yeah. when I first started this YouTube channel, I must have inspired some other people to do so as well because by the time two two or three months rolled around, a bunch of other people around me, maybe not like my my close friends, but acquaintances um and and further out also started their channels too or maybe i just got you know bundled in at the same time as everyone else i don't know whatever the case may be but i was the only one out of everyone i, I saw who continued to post one video every single week for as long as i could mm -hmm. and i was the only one with quote unquote success or had taken off in in that period of time and i think there's that's happened to me so many times, like way more times than I can count uh, at a macro and a micro level. So I 100% agree with with that point and, and the other points that, that you gave as well. Yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for yeah. coming on the show, man. I really, really appreciate you. Where can people find you? Uh, on my Instagram for now. Mm -hmm. Instagram at T-R-Y-S-T-A-N-E. And TikTok as well. Same username. Yeah. And threads. <laughs> of course. Can't forget about threads. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you enjoyed that episode, then tap over here for another one that I think that you really might enjoy. Oh, and if you want to support the channel, remember to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. See you in the next one.